Welcome back everyone to Pontos Fathom Hobbies. This is Season 4, Episode 3 of Time of Legends Joan of Arc. And we are playing the August 1356 Black Prince's Ride. Uh, last round we had uh, Bishop rang the church bell again. More citizens have come to the church and we actually have our first two citizens like halfway to a victory condition. Uh, but at the same time, English and French... Uh, bowmen have exchanged volleys and both of our mounted cavalry have been um, activated let's say other other key detail is we were able to inquire the French were able to inquire of the guide which where are the English orders to this position or this position and we were able to get the inside intelligence that the English are heading this way you can see that the cart is making a break for it with the uh, with the cavalry sort of clearing away for them. They could slip by if this cavalry can just keep this contained, but you can see a conflict is probably gonna happen somewhere around the church. So uh, let's let's jump right into it. Uh, before we do, quick shout out to Puntos Fathom Press, three book series, Disclosure from Necronomicon Fragment. You can get Necromancy of Nyarlathotep and the Hermeticism of Hastor available now uh, at our bookstore link or at other fine bookstores. We're working on the proof copy of Alchemy of Aztoth, putting the final touches on this one, and that should be available by the end of the year, so you can complete this trilogy. Check out the bookstore for other things. You can also see our Patreon if you'd like to support us here. Love giving you guys these board games and appreciate your comments and subscriptions. We're trying to grow the channel to 1,000 users. Hey, I, I mentioned uh, 1356 last round. I went and found the book on my shelf, this Bernard Cornwell so this is right in the same time here. I just thought that this is a, a cool little paragraph just to give you the, the, uh, the feel. It said, Thomas could feel the nervousness in the towns. The towns kept the gate closed. Villagers hid when they saw horsemen coming. They either fled to the nearby woods or if taken by surprise, sheltered in their churches. Harvesters stood in the sickles and ran. Twice the helicon found cows loaming in pain because they needed to be milked after their owners had fled. Thomas's archers, nearly all of them countrymen, milked the animals instead. The weather was uncertain. It was not rain. It had always seemed to rain. Thomas led 34 men-at-arms, which, except for those left to Gad Castellin de Arbizon, every man was fit enough to travel, and each of these men had two horses. They told the count, drawn from the southern countries of France, they have joined the king's army, and now the enemy was reinforced. And they said, too, that the riders had less than five miles from their overnight encampment to the meadow where the capital men had torn to their flank. So here we are, a little bit of that flavoring text to get us in the mood. We had the same idea. We've got citizens rushing to the church. We've got two armies about to clash on this small town. Um, let's go out with our initial orders. We each get two activations. And... Uh, we also play our War Council cards. Okay, so uh, we've each gotten the two orders, but we also have gotten a an interrupt order, which I believe I believe our French player will take that interrupt order. Uh, that could be handy later. We get that extra attack. So, uh, and uh, I guess our English, we can gain some, let's, let's look at some, we don't have any power tokens though. So let's also give ourselves an interrupt token as well. I think uh, this is gonna be our English player interrupt token. So our French player takes interrupt, English player takes interrupt. Uh, we'll start out with the French player has the first round. And again, let's have them, um, I, I dare say, do it again. Uh, we've got mobilizing our cavalry. Uh, we've got ringing the bell of our church. And we will have our frontline attack as well. So... Um, Well, maybe what we'll do is we'll move these 
here and so yeah these can move and I'll, what I'll do is I'll move both of these so we can leave okay so yeah so we'll start out with um, ring the bell and we bring the citizen forward we bring a citizen forward we bring a citizen forward we bring a peasant forward from this area so it's sort of like they're really fleeing right in front of the English uh, we'll bring this peasant forward and the citizen forward forward and forward um, so we have that uh, no one has made it back into the church but we do have that action taken up we also piggybacked on this action we can move these two here to uh, provide some stoppage for uh, our English invaders and I think we are, we can launch a volley of arrows uh, into these uh, mounted knights so let's just see mounted knights have a black die arrows our archers can roll the yellow and we get a push and a shield so it's uh, there is no damage taken there uh, we did need to upgrade our black knight again so just to keep him uh, upgraded the uh, so the next uh, round would be also we could have these uh, men at arms attacking so that would be red versus red black red versus black and we've got a, an attack but a shield so again blocked um, and finally for our mounted cavalry we will just move these down and again preparing for interception of the the English cart movement um, we don't we also have we have had bad luck about uh, getting any power tokens we have three power tokens so I'm just wondering here if uh, I should have the French use any of their uh, we've got the three power tokens we can have To the rescue. You know, we can actually we can actually spend one to get a charge order. So uh, if we spend one of these power tokens, we can actually just use this as a charge order instead of an activation order. So we can upgrade it to a charge order. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that. We can, that means we can we can actually move the activation to this group behind. We will spend a power token to activate the charge order, which effectively gives them a charge order. So they move from here. They can actually move to the well space instead. So now they're in full charge mode. So it just gives them a. We just get an extra activation by spending this power token. So we spend the power token. So this is actually the activation for this group is activated by the power token as a charge and we get to move them the extra space. Uh, and then this team can activate and we can bring them better into position as these crossbowmen sort of prepare to support um, the uh, cavalry move. So that's going to clean up our activations for um, well I also did activate these um, I'm wondering I guess we can engage these guys along this front so if they move down uh, we can have them attacking so yeah that's still able to attack from there it's fine okay so then I will switch things over to the English side and again they're going to take uh, the reactivation uh, they will use their actions to uh, let's have them march and march so these will come down and attack into this space so we're really pairing for the cavalry attack um, I believe we are able to use our activation 
uh, to advance the cart. Let me just double check on advancing the cart again. So, yeah, so basically they can uh, move forward here as these guys will also move forward here. And that we'll have these move into this space. So uh, we actually can have an attack just with these first. So let's have those uh, Almogavars. The Almogavars will attack. Uh, we can do two of those attacks, and they're going to be up against our uh, basically our pikemen. So they get yellows. So we get two whites versus two yellows, basically. And we get a push and, a, and our first wounded. So we will wound one of our characters here and disrupt that. Um, and then we have our multi mounted cavalry can attack. So now they're going to be attacking against men at arms who defend with the red and they attack with the red. So we'll just do the defense and the attack. And we get a attack so there these guys are also moved to the disrupted space and then we can uh, roll for them afterwards but I think yeah that's gonna that's probably gonna wrap it up for the English advancement as well let's do uh, just at the final part of the turn let's do our casualty checks uh, so we can roll these and we get a death Wow. And we get a death. So we all, so now the English have gotten their first two uh, sort of victory points. Put these up here for now. So when we're looking at a point of view of victory points, right, we've got the, uh, and now the English is going to get two experience points for uh, those infantry units destroyed so we can keep our upgrade in line uh, just to, to restate the victory conditions eight English units have to be destroyed or disrupted or four citizens in the church and then the English side six French units and or citizen units disrupted so uh, yeah, I believe we can just take this citizen unit. Actually, this citizen unit, I believe, is, is in, in play, too. So we've actually added a, a third of the six that we need, right? Because this citizen unit is in hostile space here. So, so yeah, that's going to do it for uh, the turn. We'll see you guys in the next turn. Thanks for watching, and uh, looking forward to keeping this game going. Bye.